Federal investigators recreated the time sequence leading up to the bombing by matching the video and still photos from the surveillance cameras. Since we can't show you the tape ourselves, we're reenacting what our source says he saw on those tapes. As witnesses told the news channel before, the tapes show the Ryder truck parked in front of the Murrah building where we now know the blast went off. As witnesses also told us, the tapes show two men sitting inside the Ryder truck. A man strongly resembling Timothy McVeigh gets out of the driver's side, steps down. He then appears to have dropped something on the step up into the truck. He bends down and appears to pick something up off the step. Then he turns and walks directly across 5th Street toward the Journal Record building. All this time, John Doe number 2 is still inside the Ryder truck's cab, sitting on the passenger side. Time passes. The surveillance tape is time-lapse photography. Without knowing exactly the time interval between shots, our source can't be sure how long John Doe number 2 sat in that cab. What was he doing all that time? Then the tape shows John Doe number 2 getting out of the passenger side of the Ryder truck. Again, the tape shows that a bombing witness accurately described what happened next to News Channel 4. I was standing in the building, and uh, I was looked out the window, and I seen uh, a Doe's truck, and I seen a man get out of the Doe's truck. The tape shows John Doe number 2 getting out, shutting the passenger side door. He steps toward the front of the truck and is momentarily out of the frame of the surveillance camera. But shortly, he appears back in frame, walking toward the rear of the truck, still on the sidewalk in front of the Murrah building. Again, he turns east toward the front of the truck, looking toward the street. John Doe number 2 then walks diagonally across 5th Street toward the east, as if heading toward the YMCA or the intersection of 5th and Robinson. He again leaves the frame of the camera. Another camera shooting from another angle clearly shows the actual explosion that destroyed the federal building and killed 169 people. So what does the mysterious John Doe number two look like in the tapes? The man who stayed inside the Ryder truck, possibly triggering the bomb? Well, his features are obscured by a baseball cap in the portion of tape seen by our source. The same kind of cap shown in the composite drawing first released of John Doe number two. The cap was a sports cap, flame style. The man himself was taller than the man resembling McVeigh and much thicker in build. He appears to have a dark or olive complexion. Our source saw only a few minutes of tape. He didn't see all of the almost 20 minutes of surveillance tapes that reportedly were distributed to FBI agents around the country to help in their investigation. But they do show enough to raise some crucial questions. Who actually set off the bomb? What was John Doe number two doing in the cab of the truck after the McVeigh lookalike got out? And how did John Doe number two get away from the Murrah building? Uh, my understanding is there was a video of McVeigh getting out of the Ryder truck, jumping into this other pickup with John Doe number two. Uh, well, where's that video? Are we ever going to get to see it? Do you realize what you've just seen, America? The government had multiple surveillance camera tapes. In fact, when it finally came out in court, when the federal government declared in 2001 that they wouldn't release the videotapes because of national security implications, that there were actually 12 surveillance camera tapes that had had these different Islamic individuals, these Arabic men with McVeigh and others, as well as the BATF uh, hiding out right down the street, uh, preparing to pounce on the operation and declare themselves the heroes, the saviors, the victims. Think about it. Now in 2001 and right into 2002, the federal government claims national security and refuses to release 12 plus surveillance camera tapes. What are they hiding? And the feds never tried to use it in court. I mean, if they had McVeigh pulling up alone and bombing the building and it was just a truck bomb, why not use the actual surveillance camera tapes to do it? But they didn't do that. You have to ask yourselves why. What's on that tape? <laughs> well, after you've seen all this evidence, it's clear. Federal involvement. Ratcheting up the police state right here in America. Danny Coulson, the FBI's top counterterrorism agent, checked into an Oklahoma City hotel nearly nine hours before a truck bomb nearly leveled the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building. The Embassy Suites Hotel receipt of Danny Coulson, the director of the FBI's terrorist task force and founding commander of the Bureau's hostage rescue team, was dated April 19, 1995, with a check-in time of 020. That's military time for 1220 a.m. 
almost nine hours before the blast. Chief Agent Coulson lied to the American people. He told a Time Magazine reporter in 1999 the harrowing tale of how he sped it over 100 miles an hour from his home in Dallas, trying to get there after the bombing to, to save people and conduct an investigation. Oh, and by the way, the FBI won't release any of the credit card statements and records for any of their agents. What are they trying to hide? The system wasn't working. Going through the system didn't work. I did everything that uh, they advised me to do. It didn't do any good. Hoppy Heidelberg was an upstanding member of the community with no criminal record. He'd been a grand juror for years. But when he started asking questions about the Middle Eastern connection and FBI prior knowledge and BATF involvement, the FBI actually came to his house brandishing firearms and told him to shut his mouth if he knew what was good for him. When he refused to be part of the cover-up and demanded that he be able to call witnesses as his right as a grand juror, the judge kicked him off the case. Just one more piece of this massive cover-up. The news channel has learned of another strange development. Apparently, before the bombing, Governor Frank Keating's brother, Mark, had been working on a novel about a terrorist bombing in Oklahoma City. Stranger still, one of the characters in the novel was named Thomas McVeigh. Governor Frank Keating's brother, Martin Keating, wrote the final jihad. In the book, a Tom McVeigh masterminds the bombing of the Oklahoma City building. He dedicated the book to the Knights of the Secret Circle, a known Illuminati group. And he wrote the book two years before the bombing. The tragic events of Oklahoma City, if the truth was known to the public, makes it even more tragic, even more horrific. You see, it's now a monument to the police state, a monument to the sacrifice the government made of American lives, of American blood, of American tears, as an excuse to get the feds to be able to circle the wagons against the American people, to have a pretext, an excuse to expand their police state. They covered the whole operation up. It's clear that they had prior knowledge that multiple bombs were detonated on the inside of the building, that the feds have grabbed the 12 surveillance camera tapes and are refusing to release them, even in 2002. Threatening grand jurors, destroying the building and burying it under guard, the federal government blamed this tragic event on Christians, conservatives, gun owners. But if you look at the evidence, it's clear who's behind it, the federal government. And they use this just like Hitler used the Reichstag to get martial law cranking in America. $62 million is coming to Oklahoma soon to help anti-terrorism and disaster relief efforts. Government crime certainly does pay, especially when it's government-sponsored terrorism against its own institutions. That's right, the BATF locally got tens of millions of dollars extra funding, but so did every other federal agency that tries to control the American people. $24 billion increase in anti-terrorism funds. And after September 11th, they've now tripled that. And, of course, the BATF ensured that the building was completely demolished, so there couldn't be any evidence of their heinous acts. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, they actually buried the building under guard at a private landfill with Wacken Hut guards protecting it. From A to Z, federal fingerprints all over it and doing everything they can to suppress the truth. For Bill Clinton, the servant of the New World Order, whose approval rating exploded after the attack. And his attack dog, the butcher of Waco, Reno. She was very happy to blame it on Christians and conservatives and gun owners. It was her excuse to expand federal control over local police and to merge the military with the police in new giant anti-terrorism training camps where the military and the police prepare for mass gun confiscation and extermination of the American people. Evidence of that's coming up later.